Hello and welcome to Kerry's Wheel of the Year. Um, it's been a while. I, I apologise for that. For those who, who really enjoy the gardening bits, hope you've enjoyed the other bits as well. Um, you know, the Cornwall holiday and various sort of sacred places that we've been to. We really enjoyed that. It was good. It was a, it was a good holiday. I've got the rainy days lot to come yet. <laughs> I did. I did make it. But uh, for some reason, it didn't work. So I've got to remake that. That will come so soon. Um, but in the meantime, I thought, you know, let's get the camera out on the windiest day possible. <laughs> and, and show you what the allotment's been up to in, um, in my absence from YouTube. This is the poor beleaguered greenhouse, which, you know, on this side doesn't look too bad. I mean, I've been trying to look after it and look at all these, if you can see them. <laughs> Aubergines. Oh, hello. <laughs> and the cat <laughs> who's having a very nice time in here. When you, oh, I wish I could give you smelly vision, because look, that's almost ready to pick, and the whole greenhouse smells of melon. It's just lush. But, you know, the dirty side, the dirty truth of my greenhouse this year. Oh dear. Look at it. Look at the state of it. It's absolutely beyond, oh, down under there. Oh the um, recently harvested taters um, just curing off down there um, but yeah this is all a bit of a disaster over this side but I've managed to do oh I've managed to do quite a bit down there <laughs> down there are three large pods pots with potatoes in. The nasturtiums are not letting me get near them. So in this, these this year have been interesting. So uh, I'm quite pleased with these. I'll show you inside in a second. Um, these pots have got carrots in. Well, three of them have. I just sown this pot here this pot is about to be sown and as you can see it's all a bit wild but there is a massive pumpkin that I'm hoping is going to be my huge giant pumpkin which I may carve into another carriage for my mad Halloween um, Samhain decorations. In the polytunnels here we go this is the first time I have ever grown proper peppers, like sweet peppers. Look at them in there. Ah, can you see them? Where are they? Down there. <laughs> Look at that. I'm waiting for them to... Oh. And down here, look. Uh... California, Golden California Wonder. Uh, so, and these poor little cherry tomatoes. I've got to pick loads of those again. But they've been mullered by caterpillars and weird stuff. 
And there's some parsnips up the end of that. And honey berries in there. That's honey berries. I've got four of those, one of which has been swamped. Now, as you can see, it's Nasturtium City. I've left a lot of them because actually there's been a lot of caterpillars and as you can see at the back there, the caterpillars have been eating the nasturtiums and not the other stuff. I'm quite happy about that. But there's it's a bit overrun in there. It's a bit awkward, a bit of a design fault that one because um, I can't actually reach in there <laughs> because it's all overgrown over there. Um, yeah, it's all a bit difficult. So this is all a bit mad, but the red peppers seem to be enjoying that. So this one's all red peppers, and the other one's all yellow peppers. You can see long, um, long peppers in there, and little red ones in there, and look at all this lot. Look at them all. I'm so happy with those. There's loads of them in there. But it does need a damn good weed in there. So I'm very happy with those peppers. Look at those calendula bringing in the little pe pest killers. <laughs> and all of those seeds will, I will sow next year for more companion planting. Here's another courgette green one this time so I've been making oh you can't see it <laughs> there it is <laughs> these courgettes have been so slow they've been so slow to take off this year so but they're they're kind of finally going now but the pear I'm very happy they're quite small and they're still quite hard but I'm very happy that I've got pears at last Oh, that wassailing must have done some good, eh? Here's another aubergine, Black Beauty. Yeah, I don't know if it's actually going to do anything. I mean, maybe, if we get an Indian summer, sort of at the end of the year. And another courgette over there. Again, very slow to kick off. Lots of mildew on it. This is Gardener's Delight Tomato. I had... It's just three plants. <laughs> I just left them to um, do their thing. Uh, no, I haven't pinched out the side shoots or anything. These ones don't seem to be particularly affected by blight yet, fortunately. So we'll keep an eye on them. Over this side is um, sun gold, another little cherry tomato, which has also done very well. I've just left them, I bunged them in because I had extra plants. I had, and they're in the asparagus bed because apparently tomatoes and asparagus are good companion plants. Um, and basically I've just gone along um, as per Monty Don's in information and topped all of them out so they won't grow up anymore. So all of the tomatoes you can see on there hopefully will ripen shortly. There's some of them in there. You can see little orange ones. These are very tasty, very nice tomato. The horseradish has gone berserk. I mean this is a bit of a mess. It's all got to be sorted out. There's actually a little gap through there. That, that is the Jerusalem artichokes that are just about to come into flower. They'll have a beautiful yellow flower hopefully in a week or so. You can just see them. And here is there's some leeks in here and you can just see Little tiny pumpkins and squashes, one going up there, lots of little ones there. I think, I can't remember what these ones are called, the, the label is washed off, but uh, these are little ones that you could probably make soup with, hollow out and uh, make soup with, um, put the soup in and serve them like serving bowls. And there's, um, that's an autumn crown one as is the one climbing up there. Uh, nettles, which I'm cultivating for nettle 
um, soup and tea in the spring. I'm going to chop all this back and make um, a liquid fertiliser with it. And the next one is a little tiny acorn squash in there. I don't know if you can see it, a little green one. Um, and these, I mean, this is the first time I have had successful sweet corn. Oh my goodness, it's been delicious. So um, that one, which is the ones we've eaten, has been absolutely delicious. And the first time it's ever actually worked. Um, I'm very, very, very happy with that. So this whole bed has been an attempt at uh, Three Sisters, but as you can see, these poor little um, dwarf beans have just been completely mullered by the snails and slugs. Um, so I won't do those again. Yeah, look at the state of the asparagus. That is what um, these wretched little uh, asparagus beetles do to the plant. That was a really healthy plant at the beginning of the year. Yeah, I can just see one down there. Let me see if I can focus on it. Yeah, can you see it? I don't know if you can see it or not. Where's it gone? See, they disappear. This bed's looking better. As you could see, climbing beans are just about going. I only planted those about a month ago, but got about seven um, individual pumpkin fruits in here. So one, two, oh, some big old um, chard. Uh, where can we find them? Oh, there they are. Look, <laughs> three there. Um, and a little orange one that's supposed to go pink down in there as well. So that's all fab. That's a marrow down there. So I've had some marrows off of that. And those are the other sweet corn, which I've just harvested to see what they're like. Um, and some, you can just see at the bottom, just by the wheelbarrow, some little ochre plants and this is a this has been prolific if you can keep the snails off um, trail of tears um, climbing bean they're very delicious and this has been a bit mad all of this along here is a bit crazy I'm been trying to tame it over the last last few weeks just trying to keep it under control the bindweed is going bonkers but there's not there's now bits of room to um, grow things in I've got to give everything a good water although it's supposed to rain tomorrow uh, and over the weekend look at that that's a fabulous one sadly there's only one on the plant however this one see it goes up there and along there and there's a couple of little ones, whether they'll get big enough or not, I don't know. And there's another one of those plants going along the bottom one, again, with a couple of little ones. Hmm. We'll see. This is a job for in a minute. I've got to chop it all up and get it in the hot boxes. Oh, this is the new thing. Um, I, um, I moved the hot boxes from in the, um, in the covered area because I couldn't get to them and look at what the cats had been doing to them. Look, all scratched to bits because it's only expanded polystyrene. But you can see I've absolutely mullered it. So all of this is going to get chopped up and into the hot bin. And hopefully in, an, in a, about three months I will have um, decent compost. So... This is a relatively new bed. Um, I've started using, replacing all of the old wooden beds with this metal edging because I think A, it'll last longer. Um, B, the snails don't like it quite so much, slugs and snails. And C, well, there is no C. I think it's just far more sensible. Um, and it's worked quite well, this bed. I've had that, that 
basket of tomatoes. That, um, yeah, look at that. I mean, all those under there are, are just from two um, tomato plants that I planted just on the off chance because I had them. I just rammed them in the bed <laughs> and left, uh, left them to do their thing. And they've been absolutely brilliant. And I've stuck a um, pumpkin in there quite late. And there's a couple of aubergines, but I don't think they're going to be doing anything in there, really. Now, this is something I'm really pleased with. I thought I would make an experiment um, and plant the sweet potatoes one to a pot. So I've got ten sweet potato plants, one in each of these, um, as you can see, strange pots. Oh. That's weird. Something's eaten the handles off of this one. <laughs> but I can already see if I can get you in there. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. <laughs> you can see. It seems to have worked. I mean, I've kept it. It's a bit dry at the moment. Yeah, it's OK. It's a bit damp in there. But I've got sweet potatoes. Yes. I had so many black currants off of this and off of the ones up the end there that I have made bottles and bottles of black currant cordial. I'm very chuffed with that. And this is a brassica bed, which I've got to go through in a minute because it's um, it's all come off because the the pumpkins, the Ichikuri pumpkins, these ones, rambled all over it and pulled it all asunder so now all of the butterflies are laying eggs on there so I've got to go through and um, sort all of that out before they munch their way through everything but I'm really happy with the way this has grown <gasps> last year or the year before I got one plum I picked one plum earlier and I thought that was all I was going to get but look there's one there and where are they? Can you see them? And two more over there. I think next year this fruit tree is going to give me lots more plums because it's really put on a spurt. You can't actually get it all in. Look at that. Oh, it's so windy today. I'm having trouble filming. But uh, it's like this and the bay tree have really found their feet today this year. They've really got their feet down in the ground and are, are going for it, big style. I think the only thing that I haven't been entirely happy with is this end. I mean, look at it. <laughs> it's gone bonkers. I mean, look at the size of this. This is just one, one sage plant. <laughs> I've chopped loads back and, and used it for uh, in the kitchen, but look at all that. Autumn raspberries. They have been absolutely brilliant this year. Um, they're really getting into full flow. I only picked some the other day, and yesterday I made the most amazing uh, raspberry cake, which I've frozen half of. So I'm really chuffed with that. Look at the lovely um, crab apple. That's fruiting up and looking fabulous. Sadly, no blueberries this year again. That's like five years in a row. And I thought I was going to get quince flower, uh, quince, which I was really looking forward to making quince jelly, but sadly not. No, I don't know. I think the snails at all of the baby ones, so no quince. However, the fig has gone a bit mad, and I don't know if you can see, but there is a ton of fruit. I mean, I have no idea if they're going to go ripe or not, but, I mean, there's loads. I'm hoping they'll go ripe. I mean, that's the wild area. <laughs> Good grief. I mean, that's really wild. It's gone mental. But look at the rose hips. I'm going to go, I'm going to try and do some rosehip jelly this year. So, and not jelly, what am I called? Rosehip syrup. So, 
I've done elderflower syrup, I've done um, blackcurrant cordial, um, and I want to do elder, elder berry syrup because that and rosehip are really, really good for helping the immune system. Um, I've done chili jams this year because I've had chilies and stuff. Um, so all in all, even though it's been a very peculiar year, I'm very pleased that I've had reasonable harvest because lots of people haven't, which has been really difficult. But, but I've got lots of changes I want to make next year. But in the meantime, so that's the garden tour. And we'll see, yeah, we'll see how it goes up to the autumn equinox. So yeah, it's a mixed bag, um, but it's been an interesting year. I've got lots of work to do. Uh, there's, there's been a lot of things that haven't really worked this year. How I te tell you what has worked big, big style was the massive um, mulching of layers and layers of well-rotted manure earlier this year. That has made such a lot of difference to the ground this year. So I'm very pleased about that. that uh, I'm going to do that again next year and the following year. Then I'll have a year off and then we'll, we'll see how it goes. But it's massively improved the, um, massively improved the productivity. So that's a good thing. Um, I think that's probably why I've got so much fruit this year. Very happy about that. And maybe it was the wassail as well. <laughs> I can't understand why Haya have never honoured the goddesses of the land. Now, I suppose with my Greek heritage, you know, the, the Demeter and Persephone story and the connection to the Elysium fields and all of those things are, are beautifully there. They're, they're written and they're, they're given to us and they've been passed down through history. So it's an easy one for me particularly to hang my hat on. And I, I'm just shocked at myself that I've never done it before. So I've made a decision this morning that I am going to install like a little ritual space here and I am going to honour the gods of the harvest. I am going to probably use Demeter and Persephone as a focal but they represent all of the gods who come under this banner. Yeah, I'm going to work out where I can put something like that some little altar thing that at the autumn equinox I am going to come down here maybe with um, Billy and Heidi other allotmenteers and Dave and maybe we'll do an autumn one as well as you know a waker upper to say thank you to say thank you to the earth to say thank you to the elements and to all of the energies that watch over the harvest that I try to nurture. Yeah, I can't believe I've not done that before. It feels really kind of poor on my <laughs> part. So yeah, watch this space. I mean, maybe everybody else does it already and I'm just slacking. That's entirely possible. I'm a, I am a bit of a slacker on that level. Feel it in here. Ooh, I'll run up the microphone feel it in my heart and I'm thinking about it all the time but to actually do a little ritual like we did the wassail I think it's important so that's going to happen it's nice to kind of reconnect with everybody on this level I love the sacred site videos but obviously this is where my heart is every day and it's just as sacred as any stone circle so that's how i feel about it autumn it's on the way the trees are starting to turn already I can feel it we're going to wake up one morning with that smell you know the one that, that 
autumn smell and just that kind of crisp feeling in the air. Oh, I love it. I really do love it. But I'm going to get on with some jobs now and I will see you on the next one. Ha, ha, ha.